Hello again. I promised to give you um, an update on my impressions of the um, Olympus EM10. Um, and as I indicated in the last video, I'm more than happy with it. Really delighted in actual fact. A solid, well-made camera with some extremely useful features, all packed into a very small, um, compact design, which is great. Um, micro Four Thirds sensor, of course, uh, which some people swear by, and I'm getting there. Um, other people issue it as being near nothing serious. I strongly disagree with that. However, um, getting back to my personal impressions, um, as you know, um, or as you may not know if you haven't watched the previous video, um, I actually got the body only and it came complete with a manual adapter to accept Contax Yashica mount lenses. So I invested in a 50mm Yashinon f1.9 lens and I've been playing around with that and the results in the main are very good. I do have a big caveat to add to that which I'll come on to in a moment. Um, but the results from uh, this type of legacy lens on a micro four thirds sensor can be sensational really. Obviously everything is manual, your exposure is manual and you're focusing. Fortunately with the Olympus and most uh, mirrorless cameras these days you've got focus peaking um, where you can uh, highlight the subject so that um, it's it's obvious to you, it should be anyway, when it comes into and goes out of focus. So focus peaking, as it's called, very useful to have. However, with this particular lens, and I'll come on to it in a second, there are issues. Um, the main thing with regard to using legacy lenses on a micro four thirds sensor and I'll put these images up for you to have a look at on screen now. Obviously it doesn't matter what lens we use uh, whether it's a modern lens or a 50 year old lens like the Yashinon um, they all project a circular image and our camera records a rectangle usually a rectangle um, which has to fit inside that circular image. The 50mm Yashinon was designed to cover a 35mm negative, which is the same size as what we call full-frame digital cameras today. And as you can see from uh, this image that I'm putting up, when you mount this lens onto a micro four-thirds body, you are only dealing with the very central section of the lens's imaging circle which means that you are no longer concerned about the aberrations and the quality fall off at the edges of the frame, which you would have got in a 50 year old lens at any stage. Um, you don't need to worry about that because we are only making use of the central section of the lens's imaging circle, which is a bonus. Now the other thing to consider when putting a 50mm lens onto a micro four thirds sensor, it effectively doubles the focal length. So the 50mm becomes a 100mm short telephoto. And uh, the other advantage is it's relatively fast aperture, f1.9. So using those two um, facts to our advantage means that we can generate shallow depth of field which is something which people do get concerned about when using micro four thirds systems. These next few images uh, are just in to illustrate what you can expect to get when you use a lens like this on the EM10 or any micro four thirds camera. This is a shot of an old um, gate post taken at f1.9 can't remember what the shutter speed was, doesn't really matter. It's the aperture that we're concerned about. 
and you can see on the right hand side of the image that the farthest gatepost, which is only about um, a metre beyond this sharp one, um, is very much out of focus. That's at f1.9. Closing the lens down to f4 brings the farther um, gatepost into slightly clearer focus, f8, and we have quite considerably more depth of field, and now both gate posts are looking quite a lot sharper. And then at f16, we've now got complete depth of field from the near gate post to the farthest gate post. So I hope that illustrates the kind of effects that you can generate when you're using a slightly longer focal length lens, so 100 millimeters effective, at f1.9 maximum aperture, you get nice shallow depth of field. Now, not long after I bought the Yashinon lens, I thought to myself, wouldn't it be nice to fiddle around doing some close-up work? And instead of going down the route of buying um, extension tubes, I went even older school, I guess you'd say, and I purchased for a couple of pounds a reversing ring. So it's just a, it is exactly what it says. It's a metal ring with, in this case, a 52 millimeter filter thread on one side to screw into the lens. And on the other side is a Contax Yashica bayonet mount so that we can actually reverse the lens on the camera. If I get it in the right place, there we go. So the lens is now reversed, which means that if you look at this slide, this is as close as I could focus using the um, 50 mm Yashinon uh, normally, but by reversing the lens, you can get much, much closer. And um, for a couple of quid, it's got to be an accessory worth having. Focusing again is a problem because the depth of field, even when you've got the lens stopped right down, the depth of field is very, very shallow. Um, the best way to get accurate focus, I mean, as you can see in this shot, the tip of the apple core um, stalk is out of focus, um, whereas halfway down it is nice and sharp. And that, I think, was at f8 or even f11, can't remember. Um, but to get accurate focus on the piece of the subject that you want to be sharp, the best way to do that is to move it progressively further in or further away and choose the sharpest image that you like. Um, so yeah, for a couple of quid, that's an excellent little accessory to get. And it does give you um, the option of getting really good macro photography um, without having to carry loads of kit around with you or indeed investing in a super expensive macro lens. Um, 50 mil Yashinon, as per standard, I just used it when I was out and about in my local park and these fungi were hanging around. It's, it's fine, it's perfectly acceptable, I love it, um, it's great. And when you're focusing stuff th at this sort of distance, which I think was round about um, a metre away from the camera, um, focusing is really very good courtesy of the focus peaking in the EM10. Now, the caveat that I mentioned earlier on is that, now I don't know whether this is a peculiarity of um, my particular Yashica lens or whether it is something that applies to um, all uh, Yashinon um, legacy lenses. Um, when you try and focus on something, sorry about the noise, when you try and focus on something at infinity, which is what these buildings were, my particular lens focuses well beyond infinity, and I'm not talking about a sort of millimetre of throw. Um, on my lens, infinity is round about 
at the five between three and five meter mark on my lens so um, just to give you an idea it might be difficult to see from there but um, it's that amount of motion from there to there there to there that's going beyond infinity now that means that for for images like this the focus peaking is less much less helpful um, and I'm curious I've got a 135 millimeter lens on its way to me uh, hopefully if the Royal Mail get it here um, and I'm curious to see whether the whether that lens displays the same issues as this one um, it's not a fault of the lens um, it could well be the manual adapter that um, that I was uh, provided with I don't know um, so for me at the moment using this particular lens at a long distance infinity type shots focusing is very difficult anything much closer it's a doddle um i did some indoor shots of a derelict uh, chapel um, about a week or so ago um, I was concerned about noise levels. I think I touched on this in the first video that um, that I did on the EM10, but really, it's it's more than acceptable to my way of thinking and for the kind of photography that I do. And um, another boon, of course, as I mentioned already, is the fact that we can do square format in camera. Um, now, before getting the um, EM10. Uh, everything I shot that I wanted to make square format I had to do in post now I can do it in camera if I so wish and these are just a few examples of the kind of thing that um, that I've been shooting since I've um, purchased the camera I'm more than happy with it really am so uh, in a nutshell was it a good buy absolutely um, just over 200 pounds for the camera two batteries manual adapter the charger an 8 gig memory card as well that came with it and the 14 to 42 zoom lens in anybody's book that's got to be a good buy um, are there faults with it i'm sure i'll find some uh, as as i go along but really the um, the menu system the the access to the what we call the super menu if you like um, is brilliant just by hitting the ok button on the back of the camera you get touch screen access to whatever it is you want to change whether it's the um, focus points the iso rating your white balance auto exposure lock types of images that you're shooting whether you want to shoot far, um, raw as well as JPEG or whatever it might be whatever combination um, just a great a great um, feature of, of the camera um, would I recommend buying one yeah for sure um, any reservations I had about using micro four thirds have gone out the window um, anyway there we are just a quick update um, I hope you have uh, enjoyed this little insight and I'll say look after yourselves, stay safe, more importantly also enjoy your photography. I'll see you soon. Bye bye for now.